Yeah, um, God bless you, viewers. Um, thank you for this hour, and uh, I want to appreciate you for taking your time to watch this uh, broadcast or this teaching or this program. Um, it touches my mind to uh, make this teaching again. This is a refining process, part three. And um, I want you to listen to this video very well. It will give you a tips of how to survive this perilous time, this calamity that the entire world is going through right now. And I want to tell you that um, God has given me the solution for this issue. And I want you to listen carefully and you understand why this thing is happening, where is it coming from, what is the purpose of God to permit this to happen to humanity. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, I want to give you praise. I want to bless you for who you are, that you're not a respecter of any man. I want to tell you that it has taken you a lot of years to exercise patience for humanity. And this time you have come out in fullness of your power to prove to man indeed that you are the creator. Father, this time we are humble before you. We are royal to you, O oh God. Father, we have declared you the Lordship. We have declared your Lordship. We have declared you the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and the God of all gods and goddesses. We bless you, my Father. We call on you this moment. Come and teach your people. Open my mouth to speak to your people. That as many that will come across this broadcast or this teaching, their life will now remain the same. Reveal yourself to us right now as we open to receive. Thank you, my Father. We give you praise. In Jesus, most powerful, wonderful, and we pray. Amen. Hello, viewers. God bless you. Um, my name is Evangelist Uju Emmanuel. I am bringing this message to you um, that you may uh, hack in um, onto it. Do not um, um, reject it and do not see it as a normal broadcast or normal word because so many people are speaking right now. God is also talking to a lot of people. I didn't say God is talking only to me. Only to me. No, God is speaking to a lot of people. But I want to tell you there are so many uh, false prophets outside there saying there is peace where there is no peace. So be careful on, on what you are listening. But I want to tell you there is no peace. There is no peace. There is no peace. So I, I am here for us to reason together and to listen to the word of God and see what God is actually saying um, concerning the situation. There are so many questions over there. Um, so many rich people right now, they don't know what to use their money to do. And unfortunately, a lot of um, billionaires and millionaires that are putting their money in Swiss bank, in so many uh, world bank, in so many central banks and the rest of them, it's unfortunately that right now um, uh, economy have collapsed. And I want to tell you the world will not remain the same again. This thing that is happening is going to where everything will crumble. And those that survived it is the people that can take over the whole world again. God is channeling things back to himself. He has come to show humanity that he is the maker. Is the creator so earlier for us to understand and catch this refining process and catch the message God is sending across to the entire world is easier and better, and uh, it's going to be better for us, it's going to be good for us. But if we refuse to listen to this uh, refining process, God has said before, man, is a journey. God just set a journey before us, it is a journey that God sent before us because in every refining process. I want to read it again because I wrote a book called Refining Process. And whatever is happening right now in the whole world is what is um, written in that book for many years. I wrote something there. He said that this is a process. Refining process is a process where God changes. Where God changes the life of his people. That is the redeemed one. Or to tell them that he has come to remove anything that is called vices in their life. That is what is refining process. Refining process is a way of removing vices from our life. And I keep talking about these vices. What are these vices? Wickedness in the high places. Taking material things and make them gods over us. Forsaking the creator of the universe. Making God to be nothing before man. Putting God away from the laws and cultures and religions of this world. Not recognizing him as the creator, as the maker. As the chief, we have bring God so low. He, he, he has endured for humanity. I've never seen a being like God. I've never seen a patient person like this God. He's, he has run out of patience. That is why he has come to give humanity a little, a little, a little um, touch 
it's just a little touch. The, the rot is not just started. This is just to, 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 to speak our ear, just to wipe, to, you know, to twist our ear. It's just a little that he, he, he's releasing right now. The man is coming. When I was praying on this matter, I said, tell the world that the man is coming. This is a little to call us back. If we can, you know, say yes, Lord. So he's calling, he's hitting. Humanity, come back. Humanity, come back. I'm here to refine you. I'm here to remove vices. I'm here to remove unwanted things. I'm here to remove those things that have carried you away. I'm here to change you. I'm here to bring you back to myself. This is not talking about religion right now. He's not talking about I'm a Christian, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Buddhist. I'm... All souls belong to God. We are all children of Almighty God. So this is not the time to practice your religion. It's a time to look for Almighty where he is. Seek him. There's a difference between asking, knocking, and seeking. When you talk of seeking, you have to research. You have to look. You have to, you have to struggle. You have to, you have to fight to be able to seek and be able to get. Because something that has to be seek is something that is hidden. So God has hide himself. He wants humanity to seek for him right now. He's been seeking for us all this while. We doesn't give attention. We are, our, we, we are on our own way. But this time, he wants to bring us out of our own way, to follow his own way, where he found him, where he hide himself. So he has hid himself. He's not calling on humanity. Seek me. Seek me. So it is time to seek for him. And that is why he shut everything down and said, let humanity seek me. It is my turn. So this is the time to seek God. And why did he want us to seek him? He want to remove vices. He want to remove unwanted things in us. We are, we are, we, honestly, humanity is rotting. Look at what is happening. Look at wickedness in the high places. So we, because we are rotting, he, he want to change us. He's for our own good. He's not a wicked God. He's a loving God. This is the best thing he can do for humanity. He's the highest way to bring us close, to bring us back. He's a beckoning. He's calling on his people. Come back, sinners. Come back, the world. Come back, to grow, grow, grow worldwide. Come back, every human being. Families come back. Individual come back. Society come back. Organization come back. Celebrities come back. Religious leaders come back. Community leaders come back. Political leaders come back. Every humanity, mother, father, children come back. Youths, seniors come back to him. It's his own time. So he says he's, he has come to refine us. So refining process is a way to get something better for the product, for the material. So it can be qualified to be sampled as a product. So in this sampling, before God will sample us, before he will make use of us, he will first of all remove vices. As I said earlier in the first teaching, crude oil, you refine it, you get petrol. So God wants to remove every vices that have been a problem to us. We have used, so many vices have blocked us. So many, have, so many vices have shut us down. So God wants to remove the vices out of us. And the only way to remove these vices is this calamity. Look at what he said in Zechariah verse 13. I'm still in verse 5. Then, but he will say, I am no prophet. I am a farmer. For a man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. What is God doing there? You have to watch the first, first part, second part, and the third part so you understand it. Here he's talking about ministers of God. Say that this time is a time for them to start to go to farm too. The little people that went to farm, people went to uh, hustle, they, they, they sap the money from them and live uh, a big man life, a fine boy life. This time everybody has to go and get out of no farm. So you have to learn how to farm. As God has taken his people home, it is your time now to go and learn how to do things by yourself. Because God is saying that all these pastors, that is what he said. He said many of them, they will no more prophesy anymore because they are ashamed of their vision. And he said indeed that if you call them pastors anymore, they will tell you, no, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a bishop. I'm no more a reverend. I'm no more a pope. Who I am? I am now a farmer. Because they have to go and learn how to farm, to feed themselves. Because they are being fed through congregation. Right now, there is no more congregation to feed them. So right now, they have to learn how to feed themselves. They have to. Hallelujah. Mazuka Rabakashata. 
Then he says in verse 6, And one will say to him, What are those wings between your arms? Then he will answer, These with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Means that a lot of people right now, so many religious leaders, you'll be ashamed of yourself soon. Already, are you not ashamed of yourself? You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be. Because the crowd you are using uh, as, as you like, as the crowd you are using, um, you are messing up with, the crowd you, you, are, you are putting your trust on. <laughs> now God has taken them away. So there is no way you can appear with your vision anymore. God has taken his people home. And he has come to teach his people and to redirect them to himself as the owner, as, as the creator. Then something say that God is coming to judge the, the shepherd. In verse 7, I wake also that get my shepherd. I wake against the man who is my companion, says the Lord of hosts. Strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter and I will turn my hands against the little ones. That is what is happening. God has striked the shepherd already right now by taking the pastors, the bishop, and the religious leaders, community leaders, he has shifted them out of the way. Now it's God's time to deal with the, the little ones and we are the little ones, the congregation. And what did God want to do there? He said that, and it shall come to pass in the land, says the Lord, that the two dead in it shall cut off and die. So this dead that is everywhere is not man's plan. It is God's plan. Through this refining process, a lot of people will die. I pray that God will keep you that is hearing this voice to repent, even though death will come, so that you will make heaven. This is not the time people will be afraid of death. This is time of repenting. In case if the death catch you, you will go and rest and sleep and waiting for the day. The, 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 the rapture will take place. The dead, the dead will arose those in Christ. This is not the time to fear death. This is not the time to, to be carried away. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. And get let this, let this calamity be a way of preparation for you. Let it be a time to refine you, to reshape you. Because in the midst of this, after this, the next that is about to happen is going to be worse than this. I want to tell you that God is using this refining process to prepare the church of God for the great liberation that is about to come. And right now, if we children of God, if the body of Christ, if the entire world cannot understand that the next move is the greatest tribulation that the world is entering. So this is the time God wants to announce that the next move is the great tribulation, which is not to be the worst situation. So this is the time of preparation. In the next time of, in the next move of God in the great tribulation, raised in my brethren, if he doesn't have personal relationship with God right now, you can't cope that time. The mark of the beast, the Bible says, you can't sell, you can't even buy. And everything is ready for, for the movement. The world is already, you know, to, to go into that new world order, one world government. They're already there. So this is the only way God can bring Christians inside. This is the benefit of the Christian. It's the benefit of the people that love God. Stop blaming God. It is a good thing for us to, for this to happen. So prepare yourself for this. If it happens that God is taking you, be happy and go and rest. Because the next period, the next moment the, the world is going into, you may not survive it. This is even good. Even, this is even the best time for God to prepare his people and take them out of this wicked world. So if it happens that you are among of the people that God will take, prepare right now so that when he take you, you will go and rest and wait for the day the dead will arise in Christ. God is talking here that he's going to strike the shepherd. He has already struck the shepherd right now. That is why he said he take, he separate them from the from the congregation. And any prophet or any pastor that doesn't want to listen to go in his own or own, own, his or own personal family to prepare for what is about to come. I want to tell you the Lord of God will destroy you. Leave the congregation, let them go and seek God. You too go and seek God. You're not a God, you're a man. Go and seek for God and leave people to seek God by themselves. Everybody need to quarantine right now. Everybody need compulsory indoor to go and seek for God's face. Put yourself out of the door and let the congregation go and meet their father that is calling them. There's a great awakening. There's a great calling. So right now is the time. God says he's going to strike the shepherd. He has already striked the shepherd. And in all your pastors are warning you. God says if you don't want to remove your hand from congregation, death is calling on you. He will kill you soon. There is going to be a death Death of so many pastors and religious leaders. Watch and see, says the Lord. 
unless you listen and keep yourself by the side and open the door and let congregation go and find their father who is calling them. It's either you give God time to take care of his people or he will kill you and remove you from the way. The same with political leaders. It's either you bring your nation, dedicate your nation to Jehovah God Almighty or the Lord will take you away and bring the people that are going to recognize him. For the earth is about to mourn. This is the beginning. It has not started, says the Lord. Then what happened in verse 8? He said, It shall come to pass in all the land, says the Lord, that one third in it shall cut off and die. That is why death is everywhere right now with this pandemic. Then verse, this verse said, and one, third, and one third shall be left in it. And that will bring the one third to the fire. So people that are dying right now without Christ is the worst that can happen to them. So this is why is a great awakening, is a great calling, is a great calling, is a great calling. Whoever you are, irrespective of whoever you are, get up. President of the entire world, get up. Call for your nation morning. Gather for a day of prayer, a day of repentance, a day of confession of our sin. Do what Daniel did in Daniel chapter 9. And God will accept you and your nation and your people. That is what God is saying. He said, I will refine one third to the fire. That is why this thing that is happening is a fire. <coughs> Sorry. It's a fire. Sorry about that. It's a fire. Fire is taking place right now. God is refining his people. He sent me to come to tell you that this is a refining time. Those things you can't do away with, learn how to do away with them. Those fashion you cannot stand, just begin to stand them. Clubbing you can't stand, begin to stand it. Traveling here and there with going trips here and there, learn how to be quiet and be alone and be one place. Fornication you cannot stand with. Learn how to stand without fornication, without smoking, without drinking. Begin to learn how to stop those things. Stealing, 419, all the killings, kidnapping. Learn how to stop them right now. It is time to stop. And you political leaders that are stealing the money that belongs to the crowd, money that belongs to the nation, money that belongs to everybody, learn how to stop stealing. Learn how to stop. This is the time to stop. I want to ask you a question. As this calamity is sweeping everywhere, do you know if you can last the next minute? Do you know what happened to you next month? Do you know what happened next year? Are you sure you are going to be alive to eat those millions and billions you are keeping for yourself and your generation? Do you think your generation can even stand or, or live to see the money you are keeping? Bring God more out. It is time of repentance. Go and bring all those money out. Share it to the poor people. Ask God to forgive you. If God will have mercy on you, bring out those billions and trillions. Government of this world, bring out the money. Share it out and give people. Give it out. That is what Solomon said, vanity upon vanities. Everything on this world is going to end. The minister of finance in, um, that is handling the econ 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 economy in the, in the Germany, he committed suicide. Sorry. <coughs> <clears throat> he committed suicide because he saw where the earth is going, that the, the, that the economy of this world cannot be fixed because he's an economist. He has weighed and found the economy of this world wanted. He decided to take his own life. He gave his life out. Unfortunately, I'm sorry for him. May God have mercy upon him. If such learned people, full of knowledge, those that have studied the world the economy, those that are handling world economy. If they, he has studied the way things is going and he concluded that it's not going to be restored, it's not going to be fixed back. Let me take my life. I don't want to see the end of this. He killed himself. What about you? How many do you still have? How much do you still hope on? You that hope on your wealth? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> economy is crumbling. I don't know how much will remain for you at the end of this. It's a refining process. What is that thing you cannot do with that? What is that in everyday market? Without everyday market, you cannot survive. You cannot feed your family. Now there's no market. You find that your family will survive. Everybody call on God. He has he has solution. He said, I will refine the one third after I finish killing the people I'm killing. So as this death is going on right now, as this pandemic is spreading, people are dying every day. The number, the, the number is keep jumping up. 
And God is still saying that he's using that to refine the world. And as he's saying that I will refine him, say, I will refine them as silver is refined. You know how silver is being refined in the fire? And I will test them as God is tested. Do you know how God is being tested? So that is what is going on in the entire world right now. It's not a laughing matter. It's not a joke. It's a serious matter. God is refining his people. He, that thing you can't do away with, that is what is taken away from you. That lifestyle you can't live without, that is why it's what is taken away from you. That condition you cannot manage, he's taking it away. That vice is that is all over you, he's, he's, he's refining, he's taking it away. He's touching lives. So go to him on, he, on your nail. Accept this Oligo School movement. It's a discipleship program. One or two hours in a day. Go to him, say, God, I don't know you. I want to know you right now. I've seen there is no hope on earth anymore. It's only you that will give solution. I've chosen this particular time. Every day I'm coming to you to study and to pray. Please accept me. I don't know where else to run to. I am your daughter. I'm your son. You are my father. I am back as a prodigal son. Please, as a prodigal daughter, accept me back and enter me with your, with your covenant. Remove this garment in me and accept me back. I'm stinking, I'm smelling. I don't know how to manage my, my life is useless. It's only you that can make me useful again. Tell God how rotten you are. Repent. Do not make mockery of God. God is angry. You see this man in heaven, he can wipe the entire world. Guys, stop messing up with this God. He's not happy with humanity anymore. Look at what he said. Out of three, he said two will be killed. One will remain. That is what it means that in that day, two third, it shall be cut off and die. Two third, three. Two is dead. One remain. That is more than half of the world will be wiped out. That is what the prophecy of Zechariah is talking about. And this prophecy is prophecy of the last days. That is why he said, he said in that day, in that day, is a future prediction. And God will see things happening in our own eyes. Where God said he will refine and he will, he will refine, the safer is refined. He will test as God is tested. Then they will call my name. They will call on my name and I will answer them. This is where God is going. So the death we are even seeing today is a small, is a little to compare with what is about to happen. That is why I see jumping. And as God is striking, the judgment is going on, the death is going. God is watching to see our feeling, our repentance, how we are seeing it, whether we are understanding what he's doing. He just, he, he was just doing it, you know, looking or not and see if we can understand what he's doing. So earlier the better we understand it and say, Father, we have understood enough. Please, we are sorry. National money, each nation, each president, everywhere, every city, come out, cry, mourn, and shout, and confess our sin. Then he will have mercy. He will come down. Because he said he will kill two thirds out of three. And the remaining, they will now call him God. And he will say, and I will say, this is my people. And each one will say, the Lord is my God. That is where God is going to. That is where he's going to. Mark it today, the first day of April. Watch this message. Write everything I said. And let's watch if it's the Lord that sent me to speak. God is heading to where he will pick his people. God is heading to where he will turn the world upside down. People under will be on top. People on top will be under. Power has changed hand. That is what he's going to do. And he's now watching people to see. He's watching nations. He's watching nations, individual families, people in power to see if they are understanding what he's doing. If you refuse to understand, I warn for the last time before I shut down right now, it is easy and better for us to understand right now. World Health Organization, come out and say it. The chief of United Nations come out and say, national, all the nations come out and declare that we don't have solution. The solution is from above. Let there be meetings. I say, I mean important meetings. And these meetings are about reconciliation, asking for forgiveness. Scientists have disappointed us. Knowledge have disappointed us. Technology have disappointed us. 
Humanity have this important us. Nobody has solution. So it is time to beckon on him who has the solution. And his plan right now is to call on his people. Through this refining process, through this judgment, God's plan is that he wants to call his people. He said, and God says, I will say, this is my people. So he wants to select his people. He don't care who he killed. He don't care how many that died. He don't care how it is destroyed. He don't care how economy collapsed. He is in charge. Bible said he makes silver and gold. Silver and gold is mind. Silver and gold is mind. That is God. Everything created is him. He made them by his word of his mouth. So he don't care when they collapse. His target is that he wants to say, this is my people. And that is where God is going to. That is all about the refining process. So if you want to be among of the people, God will say, this is my people. It is time to repent. Sober reflection. Confess your sin. Repent. Ask for the grace. Those things you can't do away with, you can do away with them. The Holy Spirit is here to help. He said, I should tell his people, come to me, come to me, come to me. Holy Ghost School is solution. Come to God. He's waiting. Don't say you don't know where to start or how to start. He's waiting right inside your room. Just go there. Lie on the floor and say, Father, I deserve to be killed. Destroy me. I want to die. Lie on the floor. Begin to call your name and begin to call what kind of abomination and sin you've committed. As you are calling those sins name by name, begin to ask for mercy. And as you finish asking for mercy, watch, you will see it, it will come like a dew of rain. You will see the kind of peace you will have. You will see, you will hear him whispering to you. He talked to anybody. Don't mind this prophet and pastor that said that God talked only to, only to them. It's a lie. God talked to anybody. God even talked to sinners more than righteous. He talked to anybody. What he just needs is a quiet place, a secluded place. Give him attention. He will talk to you. Don't look for somebody to talk to you. Look for him to talk to you. He has a message for you. So he's looking for people that he will call his people. He wants to hand the government of this world over to his people, says the Lord. And the armies of the Lord is under the training. He's selecting every, every person. As many that can hand over, enter this Holy Ghost school, he will choose you as an army and he will prepare you among of the people he will hand over this world into their hands because Jesus is about to come. Church, brethren, body of Christ, as you hear me, wherever you are, this refining process, God is calling the people that will be his. I want to tell you that you are among of his people. Answer this call, whoever you are. Say, God, whether you are a man, whether you are a pope, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a bishop, whether your political leaders or religious leaders or anything you are, individual, nothing. A, whoever you are, don't mind what position you are, you are managing or you're having right now. This is not what God is talking now. He's talking of calling. So answer this call and your family. This is the time God is preparing his people. I want to tell you, he's about to wipe the entire world. Do not be among of those who will wipe his anger. God bless you. Thank you for watching. I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you grace. As this refining is taking place, go in and allow Holy Spirit to help you and prepare you and deliver you on every lifestyle, character, evil, abominations, iniquity, sins you've been swallowed by. Let the grace of God help you to come out of them right now as the fire of refining is taking place. As for the grace and the grace is there with you. Pray and cry yourself out. And the Son of God is there to help you. Holy Spirit, I hand over your people to you. Lord, I have spoken according to your direction. Now it is your time to talk to people. Minister to them as many that are going through this broadcast or through this video. Use this message to revive their life. As your people are coming to you, oh my God, accept them, accept them. Have mercy upon us. Prepare your armies, oh God. Empower us. Make us strong in this time, oh God. It is you that we need most. This is the greatest need of the hour. Father, so people are coming to you. Forget and forgive all we have done in the past and give us a new chance and a new opportunity. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the testimonies that will come out from this message as you are reaching your people. Blessed be thy name. 
in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you.